As the years years gone by, violence was pretty much the answer to all our problems. Things always went missing and I just loved to steal because I never had anything. I still remember I just turned 16. He ended up passing right in front of me. He got stabbed to death and that was one of the moments where I thought, you know what, I'm done with God. It's been a ugly journey, man. Like, it all makes sense now. You know what I mean? Like, glory and honor to God. That's it. Uh, my name is Nova, I'm 29, I'm, I'm originally from, well I was born here in Auckland, in Adahu, Middlemore Hospital, and I was raised in Australia, Southwest Sydney, Bankstown. I've been back here for seven years now, um, got here 2017, somewhere, sometime in August. Got deported back, um, got locked up, got locked up in Brisbane. I spent spent a bit of time in detention centre as well, up in Brisbane and Sydney. Um, Pink and Bar and, what's it called? And Villawood, Villawood Detention Centre. And we're here now. Right now, I'm a stepfather of two. I'm, I run my own online business, helping, helping men from all over the world just lose weight, get, get in a better shape, both mentally and physically. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I've, I've kind of started my own business just to really do something better for myself. That's it. Right. Yeah. Right. What's it called, bro? Freedom Fit. Where does the name come from? Freedom Fit. The um, it actually came when I was in rehab. Um, I thought of a, I thought of an idea. I go, cause I just look. I just want to do. Uh, I wonder. It started off as a boot camp. It started off as a boot camp, and that boot camp. I was like, cuz, what am I going to call it? You know what I mean? What am I going to call it? And one of the only things that I feel like I feel when I train is freedom. Freedom from all the noise that's going on in my head. So I thought, you know what? I'm just going to call it Freedom Fit. So hopefully when people train with me or people people learn from me or something, they feel the same freedom that I feel as well. So it's pretty much a a four-month four month program where we work together nonstop, week to week, um, where it's... Ba ma mainly, mainly based around fitness, mainly based around weight loss, but also based around like changing the man inside, like learning, learning the things that, learning to heal from the things that you've hid for a long time. Do you know what I mean? Learning to, learning to harness your aggression into something much more positive. Do you know what I mean? I left here when I was six. I don't really remember much of of New Zealand. I just remember the houses and coming back, the houses still looked exactly the same 29 years on or however long. And um, so my upbringing, I moved over with my whole family, um, my brothers and sisters, my mom, and dad. Yeah, so I moved to Sydney when yeah when I was six. Um, we grew up in Lakemba, good old Lakemba, when the IJA was still there and I grew up there with my cousins, um, then we were, we were there with my cousins and then we moved to a flat down in Wiley Park. And yeah, it was, at that time, it was, it was quite rough at that at a particular time. At that time, you know, you're a kid, you don't know, life is life. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of things started happening once, once we were on our own, once, we were, once there, were no, there was no one around to see what actually happens behind closed doors. As, as I guess as the years, years gone by, Violence become a pretty big thing in my in our in our family. Like violence was pretty much the answer to all our problems. Well, that's what it seemed like anyway. You know what I mean? Violence was the only thing to do, the only way to respond, the only way to to deal with things was just to be violent. And I learned that from from my old man, and I learned that from a lot of people that I was around at that time. Um, I'm not going to mention anyone, but that's, yeah, become a real, real, real violent household. Um, I went to Lakemba Public, Lakemba Public School. Um, it was a real multicultural school. I actually enjoyed it, enjoyed going to school because school was the, was my escape, um, from home. 
And a lot of people didn't like going to school. You know, a lot of kids resent going to school. Oh, why do I have to go? But me, I loved it. I loved going to school. Because I knew for those couple, for that six hours, I was free. You know what I mean? I was, I was away from all the, all the, all the things that came, came with being home at home. Me, I love trouble. That was it. Like anything to do with trouble, I was there. <laughs> um, a lot of the kids' bags went missing. Their lunches went missing. Their things always went missing, and I just loved to steal because. I never had anything, you know what I mean? I, I went to school with just a school bag and that was probably my, pretty much it. But I love the, the feeling of taking something from other people that I felt I deserve at that time, but I didn't deserve any of that. Like None of that was right, but at that time when I was a kid, like it just felt normal. Like that's I had to be the bad one because at home, I was like this little mouse when I came out of the house. I was just, yeah, some someone different. Nah, God wasn't in the picture at all. Well, that's what I thought. We never went to church. We only went started going to church at twelve. When I went, when I got, and I got baptized at twelve, twelve or thirteen. Um, I remember the elders. They used to come over and um, give us all these lessons and straight out. My heart wasn't in it. I just, I just did it because we were told to do it. Um, and so, yeah, we ended up going into, um, go to a Mormon church down in Punchbowl, right, right across Punchbowl Boys, went to Bankstown Second, Second Ward, and yeah, a lot of things started to change. Then um, my faith started to started to grow from there. But as as per usual. I only wanted to hang around the people that brought the trouble, that had the trouble. You know what I mean? So yeah, um, I went to um, I went to went to Birong Boys, Birong Boys High School, and then I moved to Bass High School, and down in Bass Hill, and finished my schooling schooling years there. So Western Sydney is real, real multicultural. It's way more multicultural than than um, Auckland. Auckland is, and there's a lot of different different nationalities to celebrate, a lot of different personalities to try and adjust to and adapt to. Quite a, quite a bad rep for being in like a dangerous place. And yeah, at times, I, I, I was straight out, I believe any, any area can become dangerous, no matter how wealthy or how poor the, the area is. But yeah, I, I, I don't know, I guess growing up, it was just normal to see things happen, but Overall, it was, it was a real chill place. It only got rough when it, when it needed to be. And as a kid, you don't you don't really see it. You just thought you thought these people were like just being normal because you only saw people that use drugs. And then once you kind of grow up, you kind of realize like, cause these guys are fried out. You know what I mean? Like, I think drugs, uh, alcohol, alcohol become a real big thing in school. Fourteen. 15, 13, I don't, look, I, I can't remember, but I was real young, um, I started drinking, and then I started dabbling into drugs, because I also, I always hung around the older boys, I was one of the, yeah, I, I didn't like, didn't like kicking it with anyone younger, like, it's, it's just boring, you know what I mean, not much, area, area in, in Western Sydney is massive, well, it was back then anyway. Probably not, not as much anymore. Well, I don't, yeah, it's not probably not as much anymore. But area was real big. Um, schools were big. The whole school beef, area beef. But no, nah, I mean, not really. I didn't really care too much about about the area. I cared more about cared more about my like, girls and drugs and just doing stupid. Shit. That's it. You know what I mean? That's that's all I cared about. Fitness came along. Fitness was pretty much. One of those things where I remember those. So the the first time that I did start training, that I took training seriously, because you know I I was always like looked down as a skinny weak kid. You know what I mean? Um, and at the time I didn't care. Like you know I didn't give shit, whatever you know. But but as time grew grew by, I remember there was this there was this day that there was this day. Let's just let's just 
keep it short and simple. Let's, there was this day that where I contemplated taking my life, and I was a young kid as well. And I was like, you know, this and that. And funny enough, one of the things, one of the only things that could come to my mind was to do push-ups. And now I know it seems kind of like, who thinks about that? You know what I mean? But straight out, that's the only thing that I came to my mind, and and I ended up doing push-ups. And straight out, that was it. Like I never, I never turned back from fitness. Like I took my took push-ups real serious, and that's why I guess I take it take it to the heart when like you know what I mean. I take it real to the heart about fitness. Fitness means a lot to me because because of the stuff that it's brought me out of, I guess. So after I left school, I went straight into working. I got like I had two weeks of break and I went straight into working at a warehouse down TNT Enfield. Um, so I was there for like four or five years. I was working for five years, I think, but just kind of rewind, like just to rewind back a little bit um, about one of the most pivotal moments that kind of changed the trajectory of my whole life. Like, mind you, I was like a little bad kid. I always wanted to be the tough guy. And then as I grew up, I grew in my faith and I just wanted to go to church. You know, I could feel the Lord's presence. I could feel, I could feel God. Finally, you know what I mean? I could feel something. Because, like, my whole childhood, I was thinking, like, where were you then? Do you know what I mean? Where were you... Where were you then when, when everything was going on? Like, I couldn't hear you, nor see you. Do you know what I mean? And, um, and one of the most... The changing, I guess, one, like... And, and as, as I grew up, I started growing my faith, and everything was going right until there was this one night where... A real close church 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 mate, like I hung around him like all the time. He ended up dying in front of me as well. He ended up getting murdered at um at the age of fifteen and I was sixteen. I still remember I just turned sixteen at that time and uh, yeah, he ended up passing. He ended up passing right in front of me. And um he got he got stabbed to death and that was one of the moments where I thought, you know what? I'm done with God. That was it. I was like, cuz like you know what I mean? Like, why didn't you just take me? Why didn't you just put me there? Like, why didn't you put me on the floor? Like, it was one of those moments where I just thought, man, God ain't real, cuz. Like, you know what I mean? We're going to church for nothing. We're just going just to just to look at each other and oh, see who's doing what, and that's it. But yeah, so I ended up getting locked up, and then ended up in a detention center. By this time, my drug habits were really beaming off its head, pretty much. I'd already been a long time, what I felt was a long time, like a, at least like five, six years of, of drug use. And by the time I got to detention center, you know, that was it. Like, that was where everything just started popping off. I started becoming, started using heroin, started using just everything. But the only thing I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch was, was ice, you know what I mean? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't know why, but I just wouldn't touch it. When I got my papers, cards. Straight out, I thought, I remind you, I always made a vow that I was going to, like, at 16, I was done. Like, I'm not, I'm done with this. Like, meaning, in other words, my cousin, like, yeah, I don't want to live there more, you know what I mean? After 16, but I'm, I'm all right. And so when they handed me my papers, I'm like, okay, this is a perfect time. I think I was like, God, thank you, because now I can be alone, I can die alone. That was kind of my... Kind of my thoughts when when they first when they first gave it to me, but I know like mind you, I I still try to show face in front of everyone because there were people getting their papers left, right, and center. I just like I didn't want to be the, the one that was like all you know all shattered in front of everyone. Like yeah, I wasn't gonna do that. <laughs> yeah, so so I ended up trying to fight this this case and it was like six months six months in the det detention center a lot of the boys that i was with were all trying to fight it and i don't think not one person won because signed the papers they gave me a two week two week notice that i was going to leave in two weeks so i was like yeah each way you know um trying to make my move move something inside inside the detention center just to get some sort of money some sort of i don't know something but no, nothing or no one could have prepared for me to come here.
Yeah, nothing at all. No money, no amount of money would have would have changed anything. Oh, okay, how old am I? Um, like 22. Yeah, 22. Oh, fast. So you're back here, 22. Yeah. Um, I had cousins that were here. I wasn't really tight with them. I didn't, I didn't really know them like that. Like they knew me. I, mean, I, I kind of forgot everybody. Or chose to forget anyway. So and, was, oh, yeah. sorry, no, go, go. So what was your mentality, bro, coming back? I won't, <laughs> I won't swear, but I'll just say, look, anything that had to do with New Zealand, I just wasn't having it. <laughs> I wasn't having it, bro. What do you mean? <laughs> like, anybody that spoke, like, like Kiwi cars, bro, I didn't want to speak to them. Like, they had to speak, like, I don't know, Aussie lingo or had to have some sort of Aussie accent for me to like feel connected in some sort of way. But but that was my mindset. I go back I'm 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 one out. I'm one out right now and I'm not trusting no Kiwi Kiwi people. <laughs> that's you know, that's that's my mindset when I got here. Two to three years straight out they were horrible. Within a couple months I was already like drinking every single week. Um, using drugs just about every week, going here and there, doing things that, yeah, I won't really touch on, but I think for the most part, for those two to three years, I was in so much pain, but no one could see it. I put on like the best mask that I could possibly put on, and it was like, it was the most iras mask, like... You could, I could, like, if if I was to look back now, yeah, I could see it from a mile away, just how much pain I was in. Felt alone, bro, you know what I mean? I felt, I didn't feel betrayed or anything like that. Like, I just felt alone. For the first time, I was like, well, I'm actually one out, you know what I mean? Like, this is, this is it. Like, you know what I mean? This is my life now. Like, no one's going to come save you. Not mom, not dad, not my brothers or sisters, you know? So I thought, I don't know. Whatever you do, go all out, cuz. And so, for the first, um, f uh, first year to three years, I tried to find like, oh, first year, first year actually, and second year, I thought, you know what, I'm gonna just try and try and make some money through doing a, like a legit job, like just a normal job. I tried that, and I was bouncing from job to job, like asking for help, just wasn't on the, wasn't on the cards. You know what I mean, like. Nah, cuz, I'm not asking no one for help, so I was bouncing from job to job at the same time, still drinking every week, and just didn't, like, I had not zero routine, cuz, that was it, yeah, no routine at all. So I ended up in rehab <clears throat> by this time, so I'd been back by four years, and then ended up in rehab, and rehab ended up becoming my home, and for, for the first time I felt like home. Um, our, our our church pastor and his wife and kids, um, yeah, kindly kindly let us. I uh, let me stay with them for a certain amount of uh, a certain time, and I was there for quite a while. And yeah, that's where everything. That's where everything changed. I guess when I first come here, I try to go back to church, and I remember walking past the church and then looking at the people. And then I continued on walking because like it, it just didn't feel right. It didn't feel right anymore. Like I felt like I was an iras, you know. And so this time, because it's a faith-based, um, faith-based home, I ended up going to church. I remember my first time, and I was like, "Bro, fuck." Yeah, so, ended up going back to church, ended up going back to church, and it wasn't a Mormon church no more, it was, it was just a normal Christian church, and, you know, I wasn't used to the whole hallelujah, <laughs> putting up your hands, um, hugging other people, no, nah, like, in a Mormon church, because we just sing, we sit there, and that's it, you know, and that's what I was so accustomed to, and when not when when they asked to go hug someone, I was like, real resistant to 
to even share that kind of love. But, you know, it's funny, like, that whole time, that's kind of all I needed. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like a hug, you know what I mean? <laughs> Someone to, you know what I mean? <laughs> Someone to come comfort me a little bit. <laughs> but, bro, straight out, that was the game changer. And, I mean, you know, we'll, we'll do, we'll, we'll pray every day. Um, we'll pray in the morning, real early in the morning. Um, we'll do um, Bible lessons throughout the week. We'll do all these kind of like readings and, and teachings. And I, and for some, it might have been like tedious. But me, bro, I was like, because this is, this is what I needed this whole time. You know what I mean? Like something to really ground myself into. And where like, because my whole life, I just felt like a, felt like, I was on a run. That was it. Like, it just felt like a constant, constant sprint away from the problems that I, that I had. You know, my, my, my childhood, my, um, my failed relationships, my, you know, all this, all this stuff, all these things that, like my drug use, my alcohol, alcohol abuse, like all these things started to surface, started to surface. And, the more it surfaced, the more uncomfortable everything become. And the more uncomfortable it became, like, the more I I wanted to confront it. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like willing. I was like, bro, I just I just got to do it because I got to have a crack. You know what I mean? You can have a crack on the street, cause, but you can't even have a, have a crack on with your own problems. Do you know what I mean? Sure. And finally, bro. I was like, you know what, let's do it. And yeah, straight out, if it wasn't for the pasta and all of that, like, especially my missus as well, I would have given up, bro. That was it. Like, I still remember just a little bit before that, but I was like, you know what, I'm done. Like, legit, this time. I was like, I was proper done. And I was like, there's no hope for me at all right now. No drug that can fix this, but. I was in I was in rehab for like sixteen to eighteen months. The more I saw the drugs and the alcohol and what it was doing to people, like finally I could see a different perspective on this thing. Because me, I've always been the go 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 kind of person. Like finally I could get an outside view of it. And bro, it was ugly, cause it was ugly. It was like bro, it was like as if people, as if I was doing that to myself for all those years. All right. So some of the some of the best lessons that I've, I remember on my first day there. Well, I walked into the kitchen and um, one of the guys, he was just like, he was talking to me, blah, 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 blah. And then he said, it could be worse. And that was like, I know it's probably been used a million times, but that was my first time ever hearing that. And it hit me like, and he's like talking to me and like, I'm just seeing way past him. Like, I'm not even focusing on him. Like, I was like, you know what, guys? Yeah, bro. <laughs> It could have been thousand times worse than this, bro. I couldn't even not be here, you know? So that was like one of the biggest lessons on my first night too, on my first day. And then the next time I was at church. I still remember our pastor was saying, um, what did he say? The grass ain't greener on the other side. The grass is greener where you water it. And... This has probably been used a million times, but mind you, I've got a lot of catching up to do. From I don't, I have a lot of the lessons that kids are, kids get taught, bro. I have no clue. You know what I mean? Mind you, I didn't even know that face tail was a face tail. You know what I mean? I thought it was a. I thought you had to wash your hands, and so it was kind of weird. Where it was, when it was always wet, I'm like, surely people's hands ain't always that wet. You know what I mean? But anyways, I strayed away from the question, but. Um, yeah, he said, the grass is greener where you water it. And I was like, bro, here I am thinking life is better back in Sydney. Here I was thinking life is better, you know, doing this and that, doing this and that. No, life is good where you, where you water it. You know what I mean? It's where you, it's where you actually, it's what you're giving attention to. And me, I was giving attention to everybody else, everyone else. And... You know what's funny? Because finally, I could see, I like, 
it was this vision. I think when he said it, it was this vision that I saw. Finally, I could see. It was like as if it was God. As if it was God, like looking at me, and I'm looking at him like that. And he's like, and he's like looking at his long lost son. That's kind of what it felt like. And then like, I, 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 have a, I have a stepson and it's like, and when, when they go, when, when the kids go for, for ages, you know, you miss them, you miss them, like you miss their presence and that. But it was like, it was kind of like that vision where God was like looking at his long lost son. Like, can you see me now? Do you know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, can you, yeah. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you see me now? And I was like, bro, started crying, you know, started crying in church. And, um, bro, I've never cried so much in church. Right? And, you know, a lot of people might not like that, but right straight now, it's it's a mad feeling. Some people actually need to cry. Me, I needed, I needed to cry because I needed to let it out. Too much, too much of all of this Psalm 1 ways where you just keep everything in. You know what I mean? You don't say nothing. But when, and, and that's funny because when it comes out, it only comes out when people are drunk and that's when you see the real, all that mixed bottled up emotions come out. So, do you know what I mean? Like God had never left that whole time, that whole time that I thought, bruh, like, you know, I'm, I'm doing this one out cause don't worry about God, you know what I mean? And all of this, everything made sense in the end. But not, not in the end, but everything started to make sense as to why I had to go through certain certain phases in my life where, oh, I get it now. You know what I mean? Because, you know, my heart wasn't ready to learn that lesson. You know, what I, mean? I believe I believe that there are that there are certain lessons that God wants you to learn, and there are certain things that you got to go through. Like you have to go through it, otherwise you're never ever gonna learn. So I got out there, got out from there, and I moved in with my missus. Um, moved in with my missus and by that time I had already started the whole Freedom Fit thing. I'd already started, um, the trainings and all of that and still learning and growing because, cause I didn't, like, I didn't want to go back to a warehouse, bro. Mums, like me, the only thing that, the only stuff that I'm good at, it's, it's weird, but like, I'm really good at cleaning. <laughs> I'm really good at cleaning. Uh, and fitness, that's it. I don't know anything else. Like I've never been taught how to. I don't know no construction cars. I don't know no like trades. I don't even yeah. You know what I mean. I don't know no electrician stuff or or digging holes, brother. I just I know how to have a dig though. You know what I mean. <laughs> nah. Um. Yeah, I didn't know any of that stuff, guys. Only that was the only two things that I knew. Cleaning and fitness. That's it. Man, I could finally say, you know, I could I could confidently look at someone and say, look, cuz, I'm finally happy, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, before, if I was to say that, you would know I was lying. Like, straight off the bat, like, all right, bro. You know what I mean? Like, now, I could finally say I'm happy, bro. Like, have, like go to church. You know, I've got in my life, like a lot of people, you know what I mean? A lot of the boys coming from clubs, coming from gangs, coming from all sorts of walks of life, coming back to Christ. I just want to give, like, the biggest glory to God for, <clears throat> biggest glory to God for, for placing certain people in my life. Like, at the, at the perfect time, guys, I was like, it was perfect timing. It's been a ugly journey, man. Proper ugly. Yeah, some days, <laughs> some days much harder, much harder than than the others. Um, a lot of the years here were quite hard, but I think it all makes sense. Like it all makes sense now. You know what I mean? Like. And you know, I used to like <laughs> see that I'm crying. Like I used to be so mad to do it. You know, like it's cool. You know what I mean? It is. It is what it is. Like 
But we're straight out. Glory and honour to God. That's it. I don't. There's not much I can say else to it, and I hope, I hope and pray that a lot of the boys that I know or or, or even have come across will feel the love of God. Nothing is nothing is too much for God. Yeah. 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 Yeah